Do you Welcome. Welcome. Come on. <laughs> to do this. <laughs> I can't do this with you guys. You Shut can. up. You... What? I'm Rasmus. And I'm Red. Oh and yeah, Yanni's oh yeah, gone. I wanted to interrupt you. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I thought I'd just stay silent this one time. Made you nervous enough earlier. It worked. It worked. Thank you. Oh, no. Thank you. And there's always right guys. to count on. To what? To count on. To count on what? Interrupt Res? Did I? Maybe. Well, I, I, um, I don't know. Maybe. Doesn't matter. How are you guys? I'm good. Really good. 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 We are we're actually having a thunderstorm right now. That's so, great. Uh, there, there, there might be rumblings in the background of my recording. That's cool. Also, that was an actual thunder um, that, that went down. Yeah. Because usually all those like loud noises get like clipped by uh, Google, but that was actually audible. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see if we lose power or not. Or internet or any of those things. Might yeah. be fun. Yeah, yeah, if this episode is short, it's the fault of the other guy with the hammer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, something like that. Anyway, Jan, how's your week been? Um, as always, busy. and uh, But I am slowly preparing for my upcoming vacation. So mm -hmm. I only have like one more week. Well, I got half a day of vacation next week because uh, my my tattoo is going to continue. Mm. Nice. Yep. So uh, that's then appointment two yep. of four. And also, uh, but after that, it's just a few more days. And then I'm off to Ireland with Steph for Yay. almost nine days. Yeah, really Because you haven't had it. enough rain already? You know what? I don't care about the rain. It's like, it's just not being here is actually really nice. Like not being at uh, work, not being around the house, not having to do stuff, just being actually on vacation. And mm. come on, there's worse places than Ireland. Yeah. What's yeah. the plan? What are you, uh, are you going to do over there? Where so, are you going? Um, one of the rules we set up is I don't want to drive. Yeah. Uh, because of my work, I drive so much that I decided that I just don't want to this vacation. Uh, sure. It's kind of like a challenge, but uh, turns out it really isn't because it's really easy to get around in Ireland by uh, train, or the, yeah. the, or buses and the other stuff. So what we're doing is gonna, we're gonna start in Dublin, spend one mm -hmm. night in Dublin. The next day we're gonna take the train over to Galway, yeah, and then we're gonna be there for I think five nights. And gonna do all the national parks on the Alps and everything. So, so hiking is one of the big themes of the trip, but also, of course, uh, the bars and everything. Just going out, having a good time, um, eating, drinking, dancing, nice, and hiking over the days. Hopefully, the weather will um, play its part. But to be honest, I don't care. Like we got our full rain equipment with us, so we're gonna go hiking either way. And okay. Then after that, it's going back to Dublin for another two nights, like three more days in Dublin. I mean, there's going to be museum. There's going to be parks. There's going to be plenty of stuff to do. So, really looking forward to that. Yeah. Okay. You gonna do the nice. Guinness Brewery? Um, already did the Guinness Brewery with my dad and brother, and it no, was no, no. I'm I'm not gonna ask if you did it. I'm just asking if you're gonna do it again. Probably not. Neither ah. Steph, neither Steph and I are big into uh, beer. Like I like to drink IPAs, but that's pretty much it. Oh, you and most silly. people will argue that that's not even beer. So. Well, yeah. I'm just tell telling you, you're missing out. Oh no, I don't because I know it. Like I love it from the history part. Um, it was really interesting the last time we went there, and also that nice uh, like pub area they have it there. Uh, mm. But other than that, it's just not, not for me. I'm just not into Guinness. <laughs> okay. Fine, fine. Just be that way. <laughs> <laughs> but how be about you. you guys? Like, how has your week been? Guys. Oh, I, I've been teaching another class this weekend. Yeah. And then working and getting shit done. But the class this weekend was kind of fun. Kinda. Because it was miserably, miserably hot. Yeah. Stupidly humid. Yeah. And I could just sit there and watch the other people sweat half to death. 
<laughs> Sadistic bastard. A little bit. Uh, but also, there was an interesting moment at the beginning because like everybody showed up like 15 minutes early. Yeah. Except one guy. And I, I was... I was we were chatting a little bit, and I was like, "Oh, okay, we're five people. Like, let's just wait for the last guy before we start, like proper." Mm -hmm. uh, which is also how I like sort of draw out the time to make the gas forge heat up proper and make things go a bit easier. Uh, so we wait for the last guy, but two people show up, mm. and I'm like, "Okay, what happened now? I guess we're seven. Yeah. Let's bring out another anvil. I mean, I have enough, so that's not an issue." Uh, and then I was sitting there going like, okay, I already forgot all the names of the introduction, so who are who, and <laughs> did everybody pay? Who just showed up? What happened? And after some for, for forensics on my part, I realized that, oh yeah, one of the guys sent me an email and then promptly paid before Christmas. Yeah. But he never followed up to check that I got the money. Uh, I forgot that I got the money, so I never noted it down. And I never got back to him to ask where the money came from or like if he sent the money or anything. So he just showed up and I never sent out any curse information to him. Oh, the guy was just like tired of waiting and he just showed up because he no, had paid. No, no, he, he, so normally I send out an email the week before the class mm -hmm. with like last minute information about parking. I send out the, the book I'm writing so they have something to read on, like a little bit of preparation. Yeah. Uh, and I didn't do him because he wasn't on my list, but yeah. he still just showed up and he never asked for more information or anything, so I had no clue. Sure. But he paid, and I, I everybody seemed really happy about the class being suddenly seven people. I don't think anyone noticed apart from me saying, okay, let's bring out this animal. <laughs> yeah. nice. Is it really about that that you had seven people instead of six, or, or was it like the usual with a plus one. No, it, it was fine. Uh, for my part, it didn't make any difference. Except, I mean, a bit more money. Yeah. Um, Space-wise, it got a little bit tight on the side with four people, but I also put them uh, next to the door, so they had a bit more air around them. Yeah. But it got me thinking of saying, like, well, if I rearrange things a little bit, I could have eight people in here See? comfortably. Yeah. But I also noticed a little bit like sort of how I followed up on them. And there was like two of them that I'd never looked in or wasn't as on top of as I maybe should have been. Mm -hmm. But partly because, no, well, mostly because it just got so tight that it got a bit difficult to move easily around and look at everyone. Yeah, okay. So, so six would be the limit for you to be comfortable teaching and for them being comfortable working. With the current space, yeah. Okay. I think, honestly, I could do eight people by myself, especially these classes that I've been teaching for years now and have yeah. a very standardized curriculum. But it also, it, it depends a little bit about the students because the students I have now were all pretty good. They all understood the concepts yeah. pretty decently, except for the old guy. He was... He was trying to do all of his forging at the black heat. Mm -hmm. And he remembered all of the steps I told him. Just he never understood why. And he always wanted to do them in a different order. Okay. Yeah, that might be a concern, though. Yeah, so that made things a little bit interesting. And so he took a little bit of time. And if I had a lot of people like that, or a lot of people who are not as physically fit, they will mm -hmm. like, struggle more, especially along the day. Mm hmm they would need a lot more hand-holding. So, like, if everybody, quote-unquote, knows what they're doing, I don't need to follow up on them as often, then, yeah, it depends. It depends on sort of the skill level. I think six is a good medium place where, like, I get I, I get to relax a lot more if all of them are good. Mm. But if all of them were to be bad, it's kind of a max where, like, sort of would be just be going from student to student and checking in and giving tips and following up and guiding and helping them. Yeah, okay. which would be more work and more exhausting, but like, that's that's part of the gamble. But that seldom happens. It's seldom that all six students are horrendous. You said you had to do some some forensic in order to identify the student that you had. Don't you put them some kind of 
tags like I'm me, hey, I'm Steve on on the chest, so you can just know who's there. I thought about that earlier, just like to. Yeah, I'll just give everyone the I'm Steve sticker. That will help a lot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, you can put Absolutely. numbers behind it. <laughs> well, no, no, it, yeah, that would help a lot. Like Steve uh, One, Steve Two, Steve Three. <laughs> this, <laughs> yeah. Uh, coming back to his big group, this is Steve Seven of Nine. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, I don't think I'll do that. Do you think Why that would not? make them feel like bad to have their name on their chest? No, no, it's it's just I, I make it a point of trying to actually learn their names and remember it. But, it makes the okay. god angry. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> Did I, you I, hear I, that? <laughs> I'm really curious about what will show up on in the final recording here, but yeah, uh, another thunderclap. That's the fourth or fifth one since we started recording now yep. yeah and that's not fine. even that's google fine. ai can handle it no. <laughs> that's pretty intense anyway apart from that i finished off a restoration or a job of reproducing a shit ton of window hinges and hasps that's okay. going on a helicopter to go to a cabin in fuck off nowhere in norway no Nice. Yeah, apparently it's an easy two-hour vertical climb to get to the cabin I'm normally. actually really happy because when you said it's going on a helicopter, my heart stopped for a second and <laughs> go to a cabin and then I eased up again. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, so it's I, not that no, I don't that trust you, but like getting into a helicopter where I know that the door hinges are made by you, that's a Boeing story. <laughs> way, Boeing story way to happen. No, Sorry, no, it's but... fine. You have plenty of helicopters without doors. That's easy. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that's really cool. yeah, it uh, freaks yeah, me so out. That, that was a bit fun, and it was a bit fun of sort of getting these old parts and sort of like, oh, so I need to reproduce this thing, but it's wonky in interesting ways. Does that mean I should make something symmetrical or make something that imitates the wonkiness in similar interesting ways? Yeah. Uh, after a bit of product development, I had decided to copy the style of wonkiness on everyone. Yeah. Good call. Yeah. And they seemed really happy about it. So That's that was great. kind of fun. I'm trying to use the power hammer a lot now to sort of get the shape correct and also trying to problem solve. But I think I made maybe six or seven like trial pieces before I sort of felt like I figured out the shape, how to make the shape out of the correct size, size stock. Yeah. So that's also interesting, but yeah, that's good. part of the fun. I also accidentally made a whale in the process. You what? A what? A whale. Accidentally. Yeah. A tiny okay. window, not a big one. Okay. Yeah. Tiny whale. Was... So a whale yeah. shaped sardine. What? Hey? Why? <laughs> 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 no, no, it's it's the style of hinge when I was working on it. In in the process of developing or figuring out how to forge that with a power hammer, mm -hmm. I ended up making something that if I stopped like halfway through, this is the tail of a whale. This is the tail. Okay, fins. nice. Okay. So it's like, okay, fuck off. Now I need to use that in a product because this was really cool. Uh Yay. and I haven't got that far yet. But, oh, door yeah. knockers. Maybe. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah, that could be something. Okay, yeah, I'll... Fuck off, I don't have time to play with this now. <laughs> <laughs> Red, yeah. how's your week? Please yes. tell me you're grumpy again. Just sort of think that things can be normal. No, I'm not grumpy today. I'm actually... Um, I, I actually... Have, uh, I'm in a very good mood. Um, I've been working a lot. It's been a busy week. First of all, we had the... First communion of my son on Sunday, ah, true. Uh, and that went very well, surprisingly. Um, started with the church for more than an hour and a half, and I'm I'm not really into that kind of stuff, but um, there was this this band choir group of singers from um i don't know where they're from actually but it's a group of young people from various country various religions various culture singing together and they have a, a very broad um, um, list of songs and styles 
that they they sing together and it was absolutely fantastic that's and it changed at the communion yeah they were performing at the communion the the oh. usual uh, songs so to speak uh, that that they are performed during um the, the uh, service no, usually the old, misa not only but yeah okay, okay yeah um, Never mind. Um, and they are, you, I don't like the style. It's like very uh, Gregorian and very quiet and very like you have to feel your face deeply in order to feel the thing and enjoy it. Yeah, it was not that. It was uh, very gospel-like, mm. and it was it was it made me feel something that I haven't felt listening to live music in a very long time. Uh, so nothing to do with religion, but it was like it was alive for, uh, and it was like powerful and and felt deeply. They were passionate, and it was it was really really nice to see those young people perform that. And when I say young, they were like 20, 25 to forty, something like that. Oh, Not yeah, kids, babies. those youngsters. Okay. Basically, babies. Yeah, youngsters. Um, no, but it was it was fantastic. So it, it was a good good start um, for the day. Then uh, we went to the restaurant with the family and friends, and it was really good. And the kid had uh, a big cake and presents and gifts, and he was super happy and uh, was exhausted at the end of the day. And so was I uh, because it was a long day of social socialization of of talking to people and being nice and smiling. Oh, but that was great. That was a good day. Um, and since that day, so Monday, I've been tiling, tiling every day. The, the garage floor is going great. Well, not great. It's going good for the first time <laughs> tiling that, that big of a surface. Yeah. It's my first time doing that. So I have some fuck ups at, at places. Like the space between two tiles is a little bit too wide at one spot. Uh, but I'm enjoying the process. It's kind of fun. It's exhausting. And my back is like insulting me every single day, but it's, um, it's a good experience. It's great. I'm, I, I like it. Um, but it's a real job. It's like, yeah, you start with, like, yeah, I'm going to do that. It's going to be fun. And then you understand why you people actually pay people to do that in their home because yeah. it's like the real, real deal. Um, if I had paid someone, he would probably have done the, the entirety of the garage in like one or two days. Mm -hmm. I'm at my fourth day uh, currently. I've done half of it. Uh, yes. Not not only because the technique is probably my technique is not good enough, but also I'm I'm working alone. And if I had someone, I mean, to you're learning. Prep for... Yeah, I'm it's learning. Not, but it's not, uh, it's not supposed to go fast because fast is when the mistakes happen. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's true. And, I, and I'm trying to enjoy the process and to do it properly and uh, to have fun and to learn as much as I can, like being aware of what I'm currently doing, you know, to, to learn from the experience, like oh, oh, the floor is not like completely flat at the, here. So I need to put more mud in order to get the tile flat. And mm. so that, that kind of stuff, uh, I could just like put the mud, put the tiles and yeah, fuck off, good enough. But I'm trying to learn from the process, and and doing so, I'm I'm actually learning. I'm actually enjoying it. My wife gave me a hand this morning, uh, mm. pre prepping the mud and everything. So it was also nice to share that moment oh, with not her. That kind of hand. No, uh, <laughs> caref careful, behave. <laughs> we, are, we, are, we are on air. We are live on air. Um, the, the most difficult part is actually to to deal with the neighbors. Because I'm working with the garage door open. So mm. every single neighbor of the building who's passing through stops, starts chatting, and I, I lose 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah. And I have to yeah. go back to work. And I say, oh, the mud is like drying. So I have to go back before it's completely fucked. Uh, say, oh, yeah, sure. Don't let me interrupt you. Yeah, you're the fourth one today. So that's, that, that's OK. Don't worry. <laughs> um, but now I know all my neighbors, and we are, we are discussing the progress and the process and chatting so it's fun it's it's, it's a good way to socialize with the, the people living in the same same building um so yeah i've mainly done that that's cool and you get to knock off the spacers in the end 
That's the best part about tiling. Oh yeah, yeah, that's gonna be the fun part. It, 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 I, I will probably do that tomorrow. Yeah, because I'm using for the people who haven't seen the picture, we'll try to to post one on Instagram. Or I I did post one on Instagram today. You have the spacers uh, that you you put between the tiles and a, a, a red part that you screw on top of it, hmm. uh, just to keep the to tiles at the right spacing hmm. and hold them down. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and when the mud is dry, you can just like kick them to 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 get rid of it and do the the put the mud the other mud other kind of mud uh, between grout. the I don't uh, yeah the grout um, between the tiles to make it look nice. So yeah, kicking the the thing is gonna be a, a fun part that I keep for tomorrow morning or Saturday morning. So when it's all completely dry and I can start like cleaning the space. Can you please so. film that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will. I will. I'll try. I'll try. I'll try. But yeah, it's been a busy week. It's been a good week. It's been a exhausting week. But I'm. It's also. I'm. I'm also working out every single day doing that. So Ooh. I feel. I feel better. I That's feel nice. like ex ex exhausted, but in a good way. You know, when you when you plan the thing, and in the end, you're gonna see the finished result, and what happens yeah. in between is just a completely different story. <laughs> yeah, sounds like a segue. <laughs> Uh, that, that would never be a segue. <laughs> oh, it was smooth. Nobody noticed. Yeah, exactly. It it was indeed smooth, but I had to call it. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. But I want to know why you you what you, why are you saying that? Is that something that you noticed in in your process, in other people's process, in YouTube videos and something? In pretty much every process that's happening anywhere, when like not just making project, but there's always, I mean, in the beginning, there's a plan, something you want to do. And mm -hmm. at the end, there's going to be a finished result. And I think it's absolutely funny how things can vary within that. Um, for the lack of a better example, let's take a YouTube video. Yeah. Whenever you have a voiceover, over a maker video, mm -hmm. I already know that shit happened. Okay, how? Because you can see that the like most people that are, I think, a little bit more common to like doing projects that they've never done before, they already know mm -hmm. that stuff is gonna happen, and so they don't comment while they're working because they learn yeah. so much about the project while they're doing it. Mm hmm. So there's mainly the, uh, so either you can mask that by doing the project with just some music and showing the parts you want to show, like the, the, the mm -hmm. classic, classic style or the fast forward part, or you can do the voiceover. And I usually, you see people that do commentary while they're doing it. They already know yeah. what they're doing and they're used to it. This yeah. is because so much can happen. You can basically scrap your video or erase the, the, all the, the, the sound yeah you, basically everything what you talked over hmm. uh, i i remember my first couple of projects when i uh poured the resin and i was thinking about it like should i describe what i'm doing at the moment and i'm like well i could do that but let's just do the project and see how it goes i was so happy because i had thermal reactions i almost set my workshop on fire so it's yeah. frantically what it like you see the product in the end and it looks good you don't see that it was my third pour that i almost like was running for the fire extinguisher during the whole thing and the funny thing is, is if you do stuff like that, like the videos, or if you watch people that, that made a video about it, you mm. kind of develop a sense. You can see it. You can see that the, the calm voiceover is different from the panic look in their faces while they're actually <laughs> sawing something, working something. <clears throat> and it's kind of fun watching that. And it's everybody does it different. There was, there's been that style and then i'm gonna give it over to you for a long time where people like were showing showcasing their mistakes they did yeah which was fun for a while but a lot of people just want to see a project like they don't want to see people fail every single week with something with a different project um yeah and that was also interesting because that was when people started getting more open about it but even if they're not if you look at the videos you can still tell and I think that is hilarious. Yeah. Like at one point, I, I, it's kind of a little bit of entertainment. Sometimes it's a little bit, I wish they would be more open about it and talk more about it, mm. like even in the voiceover. But um, I've been there. I know that. And sometimes it always depends on the person, what they want to showcase. 
Do they want to showcase their journey mm -hmm. or they want to showcase a project, their project? So oh, their skills. Know, so, excuse me? Oh, their skills. Or their, or their skills. Yeah, that, that, that's also a possibility. I, I don't know. So what, what do you um, guys think about it? Say, like, what, what is your usual kind of way if you do something like that? Rice, you want to go? I curse a lot, but don't tell anyone. <laughs> so this is why you cut out the audio. Sense. <laughs> no, well, I'm not. I'm not afraid of sharing mistakes, but it depends on the style or the way it's being done. Mm -hmm. I think it's important to be human. I mean, Instagram is my main main platform at the moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's important to be human. I think it's important to show that you do make mistakes, that you're not perfect, that you also are learning these things. Because then when you maybe speak with some authority about the topic, people might listen because they're accustomed to you saying the truth about the things we're not that good. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to communicating with clients and customers, I, I don't want to call out any of my mistakes unless they mention them. Then I'm open to discuss them. Yeah. But handing a piece over to someone and telling them, oh, yeah, for, by the way, I fucked up there. That's probably the worst thing you can do if you want to make a living. Yep. Yeah, I agree. I agree. You you do, you should not, uh, in, my, in my humble opinion, you shouldn't mention a mistake that maybe only you can notice. That yeah. only can you can see on the final product, mm. uh, unless the client is like, "Hey, there's something weird with the thing that you delivered. That this bit, this part is bothering me. Something happened or whatever." Then you can you can explain and you can negotiate the price or whatever. But when it's a relationship that you have with the client, your only job is to deliver a finished product. The process is not important at all. Mm. It's only important to you to the energy and time and, and materials that you're using in order to create the thing. But for the client, the only thing that matters is the final product and the price they pay. Yes, but yeah. you can also sell your work that way. If you're saying it's like, and here I thought about it would be nice going with this side and going towards this. And the customer goes like, oh yeah, I can see it now. And you're going like, yeah, because I totally fucked up. <laughs> and it came out the other way. So I tried to save it and that's what happened. <laughs> I see your point, yeah, but I d I don't think it's a good thing that you say I I the result is a little bit different compared to what we discussed, and the reason is because I did this and this and this, and that's that's because I fucked up. the The last part is not required. From oh no, you. no, no! Like this, you is like, this, is, this is what you think. This is not what you tell the customer. Yeah, okay. No, 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 no. It's uh, like you, you can, um, what I'm trying to say, sorry, like I should have made that more clear is um, the end result, it also depends on how you sell it to the customer, not recording that, yeah. not showing what you did in the begin, uh, like in, in the middle of it. You had a mm. plan, you wanted to do something and then stuff happens and you have to react to it. But yeah, the yeah, customer yeah. doesn't know that. So you tell them in the end, this is how it went. And then it's not even making up a story, but it's just like, well, I decided with design that like this would work, for example. I I did a map for a client not that long ago. Mm -hmm. Um like the world world map that I do on leather and, and I've I've made videos about that kind of stuff. Um in the end during the process it didn't go as I wanted it to go because leather is a is a difficult material to work with, depending on the moisture content of the leather, depending on the age of the leather, depending on how long it's been stored mm -hmm. in the shop, uh, your shop or in the, the store. Um, when you dye it, it can be very different from what you had in mind and already experienced with the same type of leather. Mm -hmm. So I did everything that I, I, I was used to do and the color was very different. But in the end, instead of calling that a mistake or a fuck up or like an accident, I, I was very happy with the results. It, it changed completely the look of the map. And I told the client, well, it's, it's completely done. It's not exactly what you saw on Instagram or YouTube or what we discussed before, but I really like how it turned out. 
the leather worked its magic on its own. And, and if you like it, I'm going to send it to you. If you don't, I'm going to make another one. I'm going to keep this one because I really like it. And the client was really happy. So that's just, the kind of happy accident you can have. Yeah, you just step it on those little clouds, give it a little bit more time. You had those <laughs> happy little accidents. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, but it can be very good. I don't, again, I don't think you need to mention the process or, or your mistakes when it comes to clients. Yeah. It, it becomes very important if you are doing a YouTube video or tutorial video and and when the final product is obviously important because that's the project you are presenting, but the process, how you're doing it is also very important. And mm -hmm. for me, showing your mistakes is completely part of the process. You shouldn't be afraid to say, I fucked up this or that didn't go right. So I had to do this and that in order to fix what happened. Yeah. Because it can, if you're making a tutorial, you're basically teaching other people how to do the thing. And if you're not mentioning possible mistakes, mm. you're kind of misguiding them, yeah, misleading but, them. And, and, yeah, but it's not yet because something that you have in your head and something that doesn't turn out that way doesn't have to be a mistake. When you said it's a, it turned out differently than you expected, Mm -hmm. that's the point where you have different ways to sell that going yeah. back to a video when you do a voiceover you can say it's like oh and then something unexpected happened and i didn't but i like it or you can mm. say and this is what i did and then it turned out exactly the way i wanted it or like this is the result for it so it's yeah. all about you like you can show you're completely in control if you show insecurity if you show surprise or if you want to show like this was what i planned all along Mm. And nobody can prove you otherwise because you decide in that moment how you're going to sell that. Yeah. The, Is it a lie? I, I, Maybe. But if you really like it, then it's a negative if it helps the flow of the, like, let's say, the, the project at that moment to make the customer happy. I wouldn't you can call talk. that a lie, but I would say it's kind of a lack of honesty. Like, uh, again, if you're teaching the process and, and, there's an accident. It's it doesn't turn out to be what you expected, or you completely fucked up a thing. It's fine to say I made a mistake, I fucked up, oh, but gosh. let's see how we can fix it. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that the final product, the end result, is not good. Yeah. It means that during the process, something unexpected happened, and you were able because of your skills, because of again an happy accident. It can it can turn yep. even better than when that you you were aiming for. Yeah, and I'm I'm just gonna play devil's advocate here, but it still depends on how you sell it to the customer. I'm not. Let's get away from like just the video. Just go from the project. Mm. It doesn't look good. I've seen people that had products that were good, absolutely fine. There was nothing wrong with it talking mm -hmm. it so bad in front of a potential customer that the customer ended up not liking it, not buying it by being yeah, absolutely sure. loving it in the beginning. Yeah. You, you can't sell a car saying, Oh, that's a piece of shit. It's, 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 and it's yet, slow. And it's going to break it's something. I regularly see the same mistake makers do by underselling their worth and their work. That's not about, I don't think that's about a product. I, I, I think it's more about no, the because, way these because, themselves. The, because there's a lot of perfectionists among us yeah. that want to come it out a certain way. There are people that are actually completely fine with it, how it looks and really love it. And the person is just like pointing out every little mistake on the part that they don't like mm. and driving the person away. Raz, do you, on, on the sell yourself to a client or over sell yourself to a client like look at look at good i am i'm gonna tell you this and it's I, I it took me 10 minutes to do it or it's like oh i worked so hard to do your the thing uh i try to do neither which sometimes can be very difficult but i try i i mean i'm in a position where i'm trying to make money doing this Mm -hmm. Which means I continuously need to adapt how I sell a piece to the client buying it and regarding what it is. Yeah. For example, with uh, the window hinges now and all of the yeah. parts associated with that. 
I counted the hours I spent on this pro project in total, including like developing the process of, manif of figuring how to make them. Mm -hmm. So I know roughly how much I should make by the end. Yeah. Okay, this is the number I should be making. Mm -hmm. But just giving the client um, that big sum and just saying, this is what this took. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That felt to me like it would maybe not be received the right way. Maybe it would come across as being too <clears throat> greedy or just too steep of a price. Mm -hmm. Instead, uh, because they gave me like a piecemeal list of like, okay, we need 16 of these, we need 11 of these, we need this of that and this of that. And I had made a few extra of some of them because just when I was in the process, I knew I would fuck <clears throat> some up. And maybe I didn't, I lost count along the way. And I was like, it was easier for me to just make extras instead of wait stopping, waiting for them to cool down and then trying to count them. It's like, well, fuck mm -hmm. it. It'll take me another couple of heats. I'll make three, four more. Mm -hmm. So instead, I priced, when a client asked how much, I just told them the price per piece. Yeah. And then, of course, the sum seems a lot less, but also it feels more justifiable because they can hold up this thing. And these are all the tradies. So they, use their hands doing restoration work themselves they know that okay then this is the then that gives uh, it gives them a closer relationship to the amount of effort spent on making every single one and that's something that's a lot easier to value mm -hmm. whereas me saying this is the amount of thousands i want for <clears throat> all of this quick question um so you build the clients to to the piece like if you want like five of something you're gonna say well one is gonna be 100 bucks for example mm. but the time the time you take to make the piece can be more than what you planned so it, it would cost you more well i didn't give them a budget or an estimate up front on this one yeah, so that's my point. You are and not... I told them that because I need to figure out a process to make this first before yeah. I can give you a, a good price. And then it and changed a bit along the way as well. So then you don't that's why you don't charge by the hour. You charge charge by the piece. Yeah, but I but track my hours want... so I know <clears throat> what the piece yeah. should cost. Yeah. So if the client would, would ask you to do something and tell you I'm charging by the hour. Would that change something for you? Probably not, but it feels like I then are incentivized to spend as much time as possible doing the thing. Say that it's, again. So if I'm only billing my hours without yeah. justification, yeah, I feel like it can too easily be perceived like i am dragging this out so i can make more money but yeah you're not i'm trying not to i'm trying to spend a reasonable amount of time so that i can deliver the quality of product both of us will be happy with yeah but how do i justify this time investment yeah. in this case i thought it was better to give them the price per piece because mm. that's a quantifiable amount of time per item and they know the amount of t items they ordered. And this is also in the industry a really common thing, if I like, might mm. throw that in. For service yes, work, like if you're working on something, like if you're doing construction work, that's where you get paid by the hour. Mm -hmm. um, whenever you're talking about a business where you have products, you usually talk about the product price, not the amount of hours it goes in, because that has to be calculated by, in this case, Raz is the blacksmith. Mm -hmm. Like it's his work. So if he, like he orders by price, that means if he is faster than that, and you agree on that, and that's the worth of the product. If he's faster than that, then it's good for him. Then he, that's where he mm -hmm. makes a little bit of extra money time wise by not taking so much time for it. But mm. if he or he messes up and he has to find a way in the beginning and it has to be calculated in. This is also what makes it m more risky in that case for him. Yeah. The hard price. That's why you need to know and you need the, um, how to say that, you need the uh, knowledge and the experience mm. yeah. of uh, producing parts. It's the same for us. I mean, it's we're charging our customers with our measuring techniques. We, we, we're charging for the products not for the time it takes to develop them to make them 
I mean, that's mm. calculated into the product price, but this is why it's such a huge risk because you have um, exchange rate because we produce in Japan. We have yeah. Yeah. Uh, the material cost that went up. We have shipping costs that can increase or if we're ha like lucky, go down. Um, all of that has to be calculated into the price of the product. That what makes it. This yeah. is what where we take the risk of doing that, and then you just have the normal working hours. If you get somebody to tile your floor, uh, mm. you support the tiles. Then the person can't make any money off the tiles because they usually like to support their own. And then he will tell you, "Well, that's what I take per hour." And it's yeah. like I can't. I was not able to decide the tiles. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to make a fixed price because if the tiles are too big or too small and they're a lot of work and they don't behave the way I like to work with the tiles, then it's going to take longer. So I'm going to charge yeah. it by the hour. And that's like a completely yeah. normal thing to do in, in the industry. Sure, sure, sure. Make, make, make me uh, remember that uh, from what I've done in the garage, tiling my own floor in the garage, I already saved more than 500 bucks. So that's a good thing yeah. because it's like, more than 50 bucks uh the the square meter when you hire someone to do it so anyway um the thing is i uh, i charge someone for a project uh by the hour one once mm -hmm. i'm never gonna do that, do that again because exactly what russ said um i have my quality standards i have the the final product that i want to deliver and therefore, I'm going to work until this, this quality standard or slash level is reached. reached. Mm -hmm. So that, that's the, the final products that I want to deliver because that's what the, the client saw. That's what the client wants. But, but it's really hard to justify the amount of time that you spend on something because the client doesn't see the time, doesn't see the, the process, mm -hmm. doesn't see what it, it takes in order to, to create the thing. And therefore, now I'm always like, what do you want precisely? The price should be that. Are you good with this? It's going to take that much time. Is, that every, is everything okay for you? Yep. I only work that way now. It's like deliver to the piece because by the hour, it's like it it no one is never happy. You 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 spend more time than you charge, and the client has the feeling that you overcharge them for the the amount of work that you you did. And therefore, that's that's why I think it's important to show the process most of the time. Mm -hmm. But when you show the process, like let's say making a YouTube video or a, a, a short, a story on TikTok, Instagram, or whatever uh, social media you like, you can't show everything because it's too long. So what are you going to show? The main steps or only a picture of one instant of you doing something? Like like you do, Raz, on Instagram and TikTok, you're showing... Uh, one part of the whole process of you making something. It's not a tutorial like I, <clears throat> sorry, it's not a tutorial like I do on YouTube, like showing the whole process of the fabrication of one thing. You are mainly showing one part of the process. That can be very interesting because that's that's the that can be the main part of the process, like the most important one, or just how you set up the thing in order to make the the, the pieces or the parts that you you need to make. That's a very different process than showing everything that you need to do in order to create the final product. But when you do that, you assume that people are going to enjoy watching you throughout going throughout the whole process. And that would be dishonest if you wouldn't show your mistakes when they happen. But it can be also so terribly boring to see someone, hey, I fucked up. And then in the next video, oh, I fucked up again. And and I missed this. And I made a mistake. Because you lose faith or trust in the person that you are watching. If like, oh, but well, in the end, you, you know nothing about nothing. And that's not the goal. And it, it wouldn't be the truth, obviously. So I'm 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 torn in concerning the showing your process or, or talking about your failures. It can be nice, can be a good teaching moment, 
for yourself and for other people. But if you are constantly showing your your fuck, fucking up, that's yeah. <coughs> Sorry, that's yeah, so like, what what am I paying you for? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, somehow it, that that's the the theme, because you're also when you are watching a process or watching a video, you're also in the position of the client. You want this. You want the final result. You want the the final product. That's what you are interested in, and when you can see that the final product is good, then you can go back in your head, uh, rewatching or remembering the whole process to say, oh, that that's how he did it. That's how she did it. So that's great. That's how I should do it in order to get the same result. I I try to be conscious about how. I do that. And I, I barely touched on it earlier, but I didn't say it proper, I think. I tried to have all my posts, posts and reels on Instagram to be things I am more or less proud of being there because they give a good imp and good and honest impression of about who I am and what I do. Yeah. But when it comes to well, you never show yourself eating, so that that's that's not honest. You you should put post yeah, but that would be an entire that's... different account. Yes, yes, that should be <laughs> Ras <laughs> Rasmus eating. <laughs> uh, Patreon.com slash Rasmus <laughs> Oh no, I, I yes, think you meant food. to say OnlyFans. Well, <laughs> that's not too. to pick it. <laughs> But I use rather than stories on Instagram to show more of that struggle I'm dealing with, problem solving. Mm -hmm. Because those who see it, they see it in the moment and they hear me talk about it, told me, hear me hopefully talk through it. And mm -hmm. also maybe give, uh, I mean, it depends on the whole thing. One day you might show up and you might see me have fucked something up. Mm hmm maybe later that day I solve it and I talk through how I solve it. Yeah. Or maybe it's the next day, but you didn't see me fuck up. Yeah. But either way, I try to give more of that impression of overcoming an obstacle, solving a problem mm -hmm. and not so much the focus of I fucked up something and now everything is lost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. that is the truth, but then I can also say, well, okay, I need to start over. Yeah. Did, did, did does it happen to you or did it happen to you it happened to me once at the, uh, when I, when i well i was making a youtube video about a knife and when long time ago when i uh, quenched the blade the camera died so i had mm. to remake the blade in order to be able to to film to shoot the quenching of the blade the quench of the blade so I made two just because the camera died on me before the quench. It's, it was not a, 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 a mistake, so to speak, or fuck up in the making process, but it was a fuck up in the YouTube video making process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it, it bothered me because I lost two days <laughs> at the re remaking yeah. the exact same blade in order to just like make the, the video of this 10 second scene of quenching something and make sparks and fire and smoke because that's what mm. people want to see. And that's kind of a, ah. Honestly, my head went straight to, so instead of showing the actual quenching process, you used like cardboard cutouts that you painted to sort of illustrate how it should have looked. That, that's what I wanted to do <laughs> is I say, hey, well, that's the part where I'm quenching the blade, but the camera died on me. So yeah. move, moving on. And, but no, everybody would have been, yeah, yeah, you, you didn't yeah. do that. Or did, yeah. so, it, it could have been fun. You know. It could have been a moment of better interactions and people just sitting there going, ooh, fire. <laughs> yeah, but at, at the time I was not talking, showing my face or doing yeah, yeah. anything. Yeah, yeah real thing on YouTube. It was just like me but making the videos and music. You did touch upon the reason why when I'm filming some of my projects, which granted has been a while, I try to film something where I am making multiples mm -hmm. so that I can do, I'm, I'm doing what I'm doing all of the heats on like five different items. Yeah. But for each single step of the process, I place the camera differently so I can get. Yeah. 
and because I'm doing product runs, I'm working to pretty decent measurements. Mm -hmm. So all of the items, quote unquote, will look identical. So when yeah. I'm cutting from one side of the anvil to the next, even though mm. it's two different pieces, no one will notice because they are made yeah. to look the same. Yeah. That's the best way to do, to make a YouTube video. If you can make two, three, five, ten of something, mm. film, shoot multiple uh, scenes of the same thing with different ones. So you have different angles. And if yeah. one is, is, is not working when you're shooting it, you have a second one and a third one and a fourth yeah. one. And when it comes to the quench, then yeah, quench one or two of them, then check the camera, move the camera and film the other two. And then at least you have what do you say? Like one is zero and two is, is one mm. when it comes to backups. Mm. So yeah, honestly, okay. I could have, I could have taken any kind of, of steel, cut it roughly to the size of a blade, mm. hit it red, move the camera just in order to, to like show a quench of something completely different and cheat. Yeah. I was not that smart at the time. <laughs> so I, I had to be too honest. <laughs> Well, yeah, but also stupid because really it yeah. took me two days to, to read the thing. And and you can easily cheat on YouTube videos. If you know how to do it, if you're a little bit experienced, where to place the camera, how to cut, how to do the editing, you can cheat. And some for some videos, it's really obvious that something went wrong, as you said, Jan. Mm -hmm. and, and the person maker is not talking about that. But I can understand. It's not... You said it's you, you don't sell your product like this, saying that to the customer. It's the same thing. As a maker on YouTube, you don't want to sell yourself as someone who makes mistakes because people will lose interest in what you are doing or, or, or the trust that they have in you in the face that they have in your skills. You want to look good. You want to look what like you, are, you know what you are doing most of the time. Unless you go... Um, very honestly, at the very beginning of the video, hey, I'm doing that for the first time. I, I have no idea how it's going to turn out. So if there is a mistake, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to show you a little process. That's very honest. That's very good and can be very interesting. Mm -hmm. But if like, I'm I'm not going to start a leather working video saying, hey, I'm doing that for the first time. I have no that's idea a, how it's going to turn out. Most of the time, I know what I'm doing. It that, comes to the leather. Some of the things as I thought about, it's like if I ever do a video again where I do something for the first time, I show it like I intend to with the product, mm. and then like the cut, like, I do it the reels like in the end, and says like, and mm. by the way, those are the things that went wrong. And then you see me running around with the fire extinguisher <laughs> trying to put out my workshop and stuff like that. That would be great. That I mean, would be great. Just, that like, would give, be super give the people funny. the project they want to see, but then be open about it what went wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's also that the stuff that is especially what's uh, like you said, it took you two days to um, make that plate again. I know mm -hmm. exactly how you feel when I did the copper plating. I was yeah. looking for the different uh, mixtures to uh, put on to make the um, non inductive service um, uh, con conductive, like basically to, to get the um, copper to stick. Mm -hmm. And it did not work with the first couple of things I tried. And it was in the bath for freaking three days. So you're losing day after day. You're pulling it out and it's not coding equally or it's not coding at all. And you don't know yeah. what the issue is about it, if it's actually the material. And then, yeah, that's like that, that's just horror. Yeah, that's horrible when it happens. And then you have a five-minute video at the end that just shows how you put it in and then you just like pull it out and it's all copper coated and it's like that was two weeks to get to this p fucking point <laughs> but that's not the point of the video you no, could exactly. still do a separate video saying it, it didn't stick at first it, it took me that amount of time to to fix it to find out why it was not working exactly, but it was the, not what the, i was trying to do with that video yeah exactly so it really depends on what you are doing i i did a video where i was trying to make shirts like with the screen printing and mm -hmm. shit Never worked. For the life of me, I I tried everything. Never worked. At the end of the day, I was like, "Yeah, that's a fuck up." And maybe I will try again. I never did because I was I was not motivated you burned enough. It off. Yeah, I, all all all. First of all, it, it was very expensive. All the materials was very expensive. I had to order stuff from Germany because I can't I couldn't find anything here. And then after spending a whole week trying to make a, a simple shirt, it was, it was uh, yeah, it was not worth trying again 
spending 200 or 400 uh, bucks on, on materials again, spending another week to say, hey, I fucked up again. It's the second time, but I'm going to keep doing that. No, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Be honest, that's fine. Uh, but if you are trying to sell yourself, your product, your skills, and a, 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 a final product that is worth buying for a customer, it doesn't really matter if you fuck up at some point. Nobody cares. The people will just want the final product and, and, and good quality, and that's it. And more importantly, fucking up is a part of the process of learning. Yes, Oh, that's always. something to focus on. Yep. We could have a jingle at the end when you say that. It would be nice to have <laughs> bells or something. Oh, no, you take it. One of those like little bells and just... Ring. Yes, or big bells, like church bells, like boom, boom, boom. It would be great. No. <laughs> no, yeah, no. Zero, not zero, zero, zero. no. I'm editing. No. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Good. And here goes the audio levels. Ding. <laughs> oh, Plus, I'm going to get one stop. of those coal bells. Okay. I'll start. Yeah, because mine is very self-indulgent and very shameless. Sure. We just wrapped up season two of Setting Up Shop. Yay. The podcast I've been doing on the side of this one because I'm an unfaithful podcast host. I Absolutely. I yeah. podcast with other people. Yeah. Uh, mm. But we have been talking. This is season two. We First season was very focused. Well, I should say I have it with uh, Dan of Bevel wood uk and wonky workshop and heidi of whitehall pottery who respectively do wood turning and pottery lading with mud she's very sloppy she said it herself it's fine <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah and we, we, we talk a bit about this whole journey of going from having a hobby trying to make money out of it and then scaling it up maybe potentially to this to the point of having it be uh, a full full time job, uh, mm -hmm. uh, your sole source of income. Season one, mm -hmm. we talked a lot about how to get to your first market, a lot of the things that we thought about along the way, and also a few of the problems that we encountered and how we solved them or overcome them or realized that is not for us. We'll do something different. Yeah. Season two, we moved a bit further down the line of, well, you've been to a market, maybe you made some money. How can you now? figure out what the next step is for you which includes all kinds of shenanigans we, we, we also laugh a lot it is vaguely similar to this except dan is doing most of the talking and not me <laughs> you've been very quiet today to be honest but yeah it's yeah, a good well, podcast i've listened to it it's good go listen to that yeah. especially Both if you are sort of in this journey of taking a hobby into something and turning it into something a bit more serious or, or not or not if you just want to figure or if you want to actually see just what i can do with this then yeah maybe we have some good points for you but that is setting up shop and it's written with two p's and an e because old-timey british stuff but there are links where you expect them red what about you me <clears throat> um, June is the month of my birthday, hey, but also it's... Yeah, we didn't talk about your birthday. No, you didn't even say that I was getting older, you pieces of shit. Well, once, you're, vintage, <laughs> once you're vintage, you're like, what? <laughs> the next step would be ancient, and that's going to be at least one more year. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you for the birthday wishes. Uh, no, it's also um, men mental health month oh, okay. uh and so it's gonna be i'm gonna get serious a little bit here because it's 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 an important topic um 75 percent of suicides are men uh and nobody's talking about it or not enough people are talking about it obviously i'm just like being a bit like yeah you you, you see my point um we don't talk about that enough uh, whatever the country is, uh, in France, England, in the US, or wherever, uh, it's something that is not known. It's not something that is not talked about. It's something that uh, is not seen enough in the social media, TV, or, or movies. Um, so, yeah, just be aware of the thing. Uh, if you're a man struggling, 
uh, you have the right to talk, you have the right to open up, you have the right to have feelings and to express them. Uh, um, find someone, you have a friend, you have a mate that you can call at 2 a.m. in the morning because you are feeling like shit. Um, don't do anything stupid. Open up, talk to people. Professionals are also there to take care of you, to save your life. So, yeah, just be aware that whatever you're going through at the moment, you're not alone and and you'll never be. Don't don't think that you are because that's not the case. Men, Mental Health Month, June 2024. If you want to help, you can definitely talk about it, share about it, send money to association uh, taking care of that issue, big problem. Um, we just need to talk about that kind of problems because it's important. So, yeah. Very, Very nice. much so. Jan, what about yep. you? Uh, I actually got two of them. Uh, the first one is Elena Osborne, the Pacific Crest Trail. Ooh. Yeah. About a woman who's walking the Pacific Crest Trail um, out of New Zealand and uh, more about the people she meets along the way. Really nice, uh, really watchworthy. And that brings me to the second focus, which is the person who recommended to me, uh, Leo. Mm. Hey. So a huge shout out to Leo. Um, they recommended to me after I <laughs> talked to the or to talked about the hike, the last episode. Yay! Yeah. And uh, yeah, I've been binge watching it and absolutely love <clears> it. <throat> so thank you, Leo. You could also mention Leo's account on Instagram. Cool stuff over there. Yes, of course. Yeah, I mean all all of that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put links yeah, everywhere. Yeah, and I, I should and I should mention um, Leo does amazing work with uh, light fabrics. Mm -hmm. So, and since I'm getting into the ultra light backpacking traveling, I've actually revisited um, their site and checked out a lot of the bags that Leo has done. So it's like really cool. So yeah. yes, yes. And on top of that, Leo is also now making clothes for me so I can go dancing and look fancy. Yes. So nice. Leo can do a lot of really cool stuff. Very nice. Any last little tilly bits? Yes. Oh, for yes. fuck's sake, Jan. <laughs> <laughs> happy Pride Month, everyone. Yay. As that well. too. As well, happy yeah. Pride. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which, which I have, probably I have... means that soon I'll need to go out and find my brother drunk at a karaoke bar somewhere. Yes. Because apparently that happens every single Pride. <laughs> okay. Cool. Cool. Uh, one, one last small thing. Uh, the renewal of the subscription that we have on SoundCloud mm. is coming. So if you are listening to to set focused and you are enjoying it consider becoming a patreon uh and helping us paying for the subscription on soundcloud uh to host this podcast we are not asking hundreds of dollars or whatever one buck a month would help us tremendously just to pay to host the podcast uh and it's only like 25 cents uh an episode it's nothing so What's the address again? Patreon.com slash two thought focused. Yeah, you got it. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. And we will also accept bribes to PayPal. Anything. <laughs> Money, uh, food for us, anything. Yeah, yeah. Especially food for me. That will be excellent. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 That's probably the most okay. expensive sponsor level, but we'll accept <laughs> it if you if you have the means. Um uh, yeah, and if you want to get a hold of us anywhere else on the great interwebs, you can do that at two thirds focused by spelling it out. And you can find me at Rasmus Lowen and Lowensmeer.no. And you can find me at the Red Smith or Red Smith, everyone on the internet, and more specifically at redsmithsleatherwork.com. It's new, it's done. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, I, I still need to work on a website, but the transfer of domain is, is done now. So, 
Yeah. And you can find me at Jan Maxwell or Nerd Inventor on the internet. More precisely, Instagram and YouTube. And uh, in a week from now, you can find me in Ireland. Yay. Wonderful. Yes. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Have a good week. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.